Hey everybody, today with us we have uh, my friend Fred Sayers. He is a seasoned entertainer. Mm. <laughs> And uh, we're going to talk uh, a little bit with him. Uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born at a very young age. I wanted to be near my mother, <laughs> and it was uh, a traumatic experience, but uh, I lived through it. <laughs> so are you uh, from Huntsville originally? Well, I, I was born in Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin, but mm -hmm. uh, my dad was in the Army, so we moved around a bit and landed here um, in the early 50s. And... Uh, he worked on the arsenal, and uh, matter of fact, he was in the ordinance, army ordinance, and Warner von Braun. When he came to Huntsville, he worked for my dad for a while, mm. and uh, then we just stayed here, and uh, he retired, and we just continued to live here because it's a great place to live. And then you're married, and oh yeah, you have I'm a married. lovely wife and lots of kids. Right, I, we, I've been married to forty. Well, it'll be forty-four years in. Uh, in June, but we dated three years before that, and I've got uh, two daughters, a son, and six grandkids. Uh, and you do have a lovely family, especially your wife. She's a sweet lady. Oh, she is. I love her. <laughs> Who think? knows? She might be on here next. <laughs> oh, there you are. Oh, no. Oh, watch what I say to you. She'll retaliate. So, uh, I find you, your story interesting. Like, I, I constantly learn new things about you, and I've known you for eight years, I guess now. Mm -hmm. And we we actually did improv together in an improv troupe called Face to Face Improv. And uh, dun, 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 dun. Um, so I think that over the years, I just keep learning little things about you, and I'll run into somebody that knows you, and they say, "Oh, well, Fred did that," and I'll be like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> so what inspires you to do creative things? Well, I, I remember when I was eight years old, I decided what I was going to do with, with my life. I was going to be uh, in advertising and doing artwork and uh, designing things and, and preferably drawing cartoons because cartoons are my life. I love, love cartoons. And uh, that led to uh, going to uh, Marion Institute, which is a military school, for the first two years of my college. And then uh, the last two, I went to Auburn University and studied visual design. And from there, I've really, the, what's the greatest thing about my life is I've met some very interesting people. Uh, of course, out of school, I immediately went to Atlanta because that was where the advertising mecca was at that time. And, uh, and I did some, some work there, but I just didn't like the, the city itself. Mm -hmm. So I moved back to Huntsville. Uh, one night, Tina and I were just looking at each other in our apartment, and we said, we don't want to live here anymore, and we started packing. <laughs> I went in the next morning, turned in my resignation to the advertising agency I was working at, and we packed up and moved to Huntsville. I didn't have a job, didn't have a place to stay, nothing. But we had family here, and uh, Tina's family is all here, and it's a big family. <laughs> I'm still trying to learn the name. <laughs> and uh, we started out, and uh, it was the best move I ever made, because I did more here in Huntsville than I could ever do in Atlanta. It might have been on a smaller scale, mm -hmm. but I was able to do it, and that was uh, that was the important thing to me. It seems like in smaller cities like that, um, whereas opposed, if you go to uh, L.A. or New York to do acting, you're a small fish in a big pond, mm -hmm. and it might have been the same way, I guess, in Atlanta for you. Uh, pretty much, yeah. Uh, there was a lot of talent there, and mm -hmm. you know, I'm not the best in the world, and you know, so it was. It was. Tough. Well, some would disagree with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, here they would. <laughs> but uh, it just was uh, the experiences and all that I've I've gotten here. Have, have, uh, I mean, I've I've worked in uh, television. Well, that's when I first started out in television, uh, working in uh, the public relations office, doing the TV guide ads and all that kind of stuff. Uh, in Atlanta, I worked for Channel 5, and uh, being in the public relations office, we got to meet all the stars that came in, uh, which was neat. So that was an advantage of being there. Um, but then I came here, and uh, I got to, uh, again, work in television. And uh, one day I get a phone call, I was working at Channel 19 as a commercial producer, and I get a call from this fella named Harry Melson. Never heard of him. He and he says, I understand you do cartoons. I said, yes, sir. I figured it was somebody that wanted a cartoon. So. And he said, well, I've got about 2,000 of them to do for the Army. Would you like a job? And I said, 
you're going to pay me <laughs> to draw cartoons. He says, yes. I said, um, I'll be there in 15 minutes. <laughs> so I tore down the mountain and went and meet this guy. And uh, sure enough, we did uh, ordinance identification. So what is that for people that don't know what that is? Uh, if you've got a landmine or a, a high explosive, it, different colors would determine what it, if it was inert or if it was a high explosive or white phosphorus and this kind of thing. And uh, so we would train, we'd do films to train uh, army, the army personnel to, to identify these things. And we had our, our series of villains. We had, uh, we had a Viet Vietnamese villain, we had a, a, a Hessian villain, we had a Russian villain. And, uh, Probably at the time, those were the the enemies yeah, of the United uh, States people at the could time. Yeah. yeah, but Army said we can't use the Vietnam one because that would be too sensitive. Uh -huh. so this was what was it, 70, 76, 77, So the war was over, and we're trying to make things make nice. Thing, yeah, so they wouldn't let you use that. We couldn't blow up a Vietnamese. So. Oh man! So it was fun. Uh, we we and uh, then that led to uh, Harry uh, started his own art business and he did doing contracts with the army and uh, I was left at uh, Superior Technical Services where that's where we worked and uh, so I went to him one day and I said uh, Harry we, we could start an advertising agency here in town and it, it, we need someone that, that's got some different ideas and all and he says okay so he gave me an office and he set me up and uh, I started the agency and then I had this fellow walk in and says that he wanted to be in advertising but I wouldn't have to pay him until he learned his, his way so I said okay <laughs> and uh, so you hired an apprentice uh -huh, exactly, yeah right <laughs> intern so we started building we got clients and uh, finally uh, we got into a big office and I had a big uh, a, the high-rise uh, office across from the hospital and uh, we had some good clients and we won lots of awards and we won well, just about every category that uh, the Advertising Federation offered at that time, and uh, including jingles and print ads and talent and all this sort of stuff. We were having a good time, and then uh, what the fellow that had walked in came to me and said he'd like to buy the agency. And the one thing you want to do is we have an advertising agency, says build it up so that somebody will buy it. Mm -hmm. So I sold it. <laughs> <laughs> and went back to government contracting for a while, and then... Uh, Got a job at the Space and Rocket Center, supervising their uh, exhibits uh, and bit the design and, and construction of them. And I get another phone call. So, with the designing of the exhibits, like was that when the first when it first opened? No, no, this was uh, further on. Yeah, further this on was down. 80, 87, 88. Are there still any exhibits out there that you designed? That Probably they, not, because they changed you know, them. Yeah, oh yeah, they they change them constantly. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we did all the signage and all the print material, mm -hmm. uh, the, bro the uh, catalogs and brochures and all, anything that had it, uh, to do with print, mm -hmm. uh, our office handled it. And, uh, and I was working there and went, got another call from somebody and said, uh, I'd like to come from, work for me. And this was a fellow that I met in theater. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we were doing Gypsy and I was the, uh, played uh, George and uh, he was my understudy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So we became good friends, and he called me. He said, "I'd like to come to work for him." I said, "Well, what, in what?" And he said, "Well, I work the television and photo ops division of the space shuttle, um, the payload part of it, and payloads are what the experiments or whatever they carry up there." Mm -hmm. So I said, uh, "John, it was John Harrison, the name." I said, uh, "John, I I know absolutely. I'm not an engineer. I know absolutely nothing about the space program, except you know, what I see here, the history of it." He says, well, I don't, I'm not looking for that. I'm, you have TV experience and print experience, and you can get along with people. And we have strange people here. Yeah. Because it's true. You know, engineers mean, are that's strange. That's important. Scientists are even stranger. <laughs> so, uh, because we work with experiments and all. So mm -hmm. I worked in, uh, went to tour for Teledyne Brown in that, in that group, and that led to, uh, when the shuttle program ended, I moved into the space station. And uh, I became a data management coordinator, big title. <laughs> well, what we did, we sat on console in, in real time, collected all the data from the payloads, and then uh, brought it down and distributed it to all the users in Jap Japan. I talked to people in Japan and on the loops we have, uh, 
talk to people in Japan, Europe, and uh, Russia had their own system, so I never really talked to them. Every once in a while, very, very few times. It was mostly Europe and Japan. And we coordinated all the data and made sure they got their television and everything, so it was, it was exciting to be right in the middle of the space program. And then you did that for, for a long time, didn't you? Did that uh, 21 years, I guess. And you just recently retired from that. Yeah. So. Best move I ever made. <laughs> Retirement <Highly> sounds fun. <laughs> it is. I don't know if I'll ever get there. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned that you did theater. Yeah. Um, so when did you start doing that? Um, well, first, before we get into that, let's uh -huh. talk about, uh, let's continue to talk about your cartoon stuff because you still do that kind of stuff now. Oh, every chance right? I get, yeah. So tell people about how you uh, use that now. Well, uh, well, going back to the advertising agency, uh, whenever a client would come in with a problem and all, and I was a creative director, because uh, I own the place, so I had to call myself a creative director. Um, I would design something for them, and I kept noticing that everything I did was a cartoon. And, you know, you're going to get focused on one area, you're not going to go very far, so I had to hire somebody who did just graphic design. Mm -hmm. But, uh, Cartoons, uh, that's, I still do cartoons uh, any chance I get. You know, people call me up and have me, me do cartoons. I just did the uh, the dog ball, did their invitation, uh, things like that. And you do festivals too. Like uh, yeah. I know you did this festival here, the Madison right. Street Festival that we have every uh, year. You were there this year. It was. Doing uh, cartoons for people. Car yeah, I, caricatures. I call them cartoons because mm -hmm. I put them in situations. Mm -hmm. I talk to them, find out something about them, and I, I do a character of them, and then put them in some kind of situation that uh, that they uh, would relate to them. So it's not it's more than just a caricature. Mm -hmm. um, and I did uh, did one for uh, the, people call me for all sorts of stuff, and uh, did fellow had an idea for a poster, and uh, so I did this gigantic. 30 by 40 poster and another fellow wanted uh, caricatures of, of his girlfriend's family and there was about it was I think it was eight people and, and four horses and dogs mm -hmm. and so this and this is you know a sample of what I did for you <laughs> I don't I don't think you have a dog but uh, no, that's great <laughs> so I'm, I'm doing caricatures of people and, and putting their pets in there that's fantastic yeah, so. that's yours oh thank you so much awesome that's amazing. Um, so let's go back now to the theater thing. Uh -huh. You've done theater for a long time here yes, in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you get involved in doing that? Well, I tried um, in Atlanta and uh, went to auditions and all, but I just, I just, the feeling was not that they were way above me, and and I was just starting out. So I. And that was back in part. the fifties. Oh uh, no, no, this is sixties, uh, uh, early seventies. Seventies, mm -hmm. okay. So I moved, Tina and I moved back to Huntsville in 75, and uh, my mom had been one of the original people who started uh, Huntsville Theater, which was a community theater here. And uh, so I decided, well, I've, it was still going. It's, I think it's the oldest community theater in, in the country. So I went down and auditioned uh, for a, a play. It was called uh, Goodbye Charlie. I got a part. I got 10 minutes on stage. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, luckily, the the theater uh, playhouse is right near was right near the, the Hilton at that time. So uh, I'd be on stage in the first ten minutes, and I'd have maybe an hour and a half before I, for curtain call. So I'd go over to the Hilton and sit there at the bar for a while, and when the <laughs> time came, I'd come back and go on Did stage. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, I'm gonna like theater. It's great. It works out fine. So uh, you said your mom was that. Uh, involved uh, with starting a theater, so she yeah. must have done theater as well. Oh yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So is that what you think stemmed a passion to try that? Well, it was uh, it was an adventure, and uh, I always like adventures, new things, try things. Um, and she and I had a great relationship. I mean, we, we joked and, and had good times, and we always. Do little bits and all together. And uh, my sisters, I had, I have two sisters, and we get a script and we play all the parts. And, and uh, so I said, well, I'm gonna try it. So I went down and, and auditioned, got this part, and then from there, I just, you know, 
It's like everybody that gets in the theater the very first time. You enjoy it so much that you just can't get enough of it. Mm -hmm. So there was a time when I was in a show, rehearsing the show, and planning to, to audition for another show. I mean, and it was just constant. And then I figured out I can't do this because of rehearsal and time and all that. It's just taken away from my family. So it I, does take a lot you know, of time, and you're volunteering. It's not like you're getting paid right, to do that, so right. it's not like a job. Right. But it does overtake your life a lot. Mm -hmm. But there is a great need for a lot of men in theater, right? Do you find that true here in Huntsville? Like, are there there a lot more men or a lot more women, or is it equally balanced? Well, I think it's equally balanced because uh, if people are not in a play, they're working behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. they're not, maybe not be on stage, but they, mm -hmm. they're uh, supporting everything that's going on stage, mm -hmm. uh, which is very important. That's, that's a, a one, very important one part job. of the theater that people don't see. So, uh, no, it, uh, and you, they try to, to find plays that will accommodate women or men, and mm -hmm. uh, both having the roles equal in the, in the play. A lot of times, like they're doing 12 Angry Men now, and I don't think there's any women in it. No, there's not. But, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it all depends on the play, uh, and uh, I think it's pretty well balanced. Uh, so you continue to do theater, um, and I know that, well, let's talk about how it worked up to opening the theater around the corner. Oh, okay. Let's talk about that. Well, there again, another person I met in my life, uh, Byron Tidwell, and we uh, we did, he, matter of fact, he started Twickenham Repertory Company here in town, which was a semi-professional theater. And uh, I was part of that, and, uh, and we, got together and started collaborating with things, and uh, we planned to open up a theater. Well, first it was a dinner theater, but I said, I know absolutely nothing about the food industry, so that would not be a good idea. <laughs> and he didn't either, so uh, so we decided a theater. So we would looked for, I guess, 10 years, trying to find a location, a venue, and we finally found it. He had moved off uh, to Texas, I believe, someplace else. and. Uh, I called him, I said I found the first perfect place. It was the old Belk Hudson building, part of it anyways, the one, the one story part. And it was- and That's uh, downtown Huntsville or uh, It's apartment buildings now. It's mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, under the radar is right next to it now. Mm -hmm. and, but it's a parking garage. I saw it the other day, there's a parking garage now that they put in there. Mm. But it was 1,500 square feet of, of open space. There's no columns, no, so we cut it in half and built the theater on half of it, and then behind it we had a set construction and rehearsal area. It was perfect, it was great. Acoustics were outstanding. We could do musicals without having to mic them or anything. Um, and uh, it seated about 200 people. And we used to have a, every month we'd have a dinner theater where we'd serve dinner out in the lobby, have it catered, and then people come in and watch the, the show. And we, we were doing real well. Uh, matter of fact, uh, in 99, uh, we totaled it up and we had done, in four years, we'd done about 50 productions. Wow, that's a lot. Well, we'd do it a little different. We would we would cast the, the shows and we would uh, have the, the cast read the script and learn the lines before they came to rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And they would rehearse four weeks in the back while another show was going on. Mm. And as soon as that show closed, then we'd take a week to change out the set and do some uh, rehearsing on the stage with everything. And then the show would open and we'd run for 16 to 17 shows. Wow. So it, uh, it ran a little different mm -hmm. uh, uh, than the local theater, which just works on weekends and yeah. rehearses for three years. I think it seems like each play. <laughs> <laughs> but they have to because it, yeah, it, yeah. it's uh, you know, people have, have other lives and they, they just can't do that for a, for a living. Yeah. But uh, we did very well, and then we just we started doing business plans to uh, expand it because we were worn out with the seven eight people that owned the place, and, and we were co-owners, and we did all the work too, and we wanted to turn it over to some staff or something so we could enjoy life again. Yeah. Uh, but 
the numbers and all and, and everything just weren't there so we decided to close it mm -hmm. and we did and we closed it in the black we did we didn't owe anybody anything we mm -hmm. got through which was unusual that's for that is and, an amazing accomplishment right, within itself right. so how did that lead you to uh face to face what what did you do in between between the time <laughs> that closed eugene banks uh had just he was working in a decatur for the uh the, for cook's pest control there and he came in one day to the theater and he wanted to be in a show. So uh, we we auditioned and he, and he got cast. As a matter of fact, we, we were in Sunshine Boys. I was playing one of the boys and he was my son. And uh, he was great. And uh, and he, he started coming. Saturday mornings, he would take his time off, come to, from Decatur. And we had a big lobby. And he would come and vacuum the lobby for us. Just because he wanted to be there mm -hmm. because the atmosphere there was, was everybody said it was that worked there said it was fantastic because it was a positive and creative uh, place and uh, so we closed the theater in 99 I think it was 2002 we were at a birthday party for one of the people that uh, used to help us uh, and uh, he I had heard that he wanted to start an improv group and there again, there's something else, another different thing that I could get into that I had not done before, but always wanted to, another adventure. So <laughs> he, I walked up to him and he walked up to me and we both said at the same time, would you like to be in an improv? And I said, I would like to be in your improv. <laughs> so that's how that The timing started, started yeah. early yeah. in the <laughs> beginning with you two then, huh? Had you uh, ever heard of improv? Like, how did you hear oh, about yeah, that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I knew it. I knew what it was. Uh, and I, and it, it always intrigued me because, uh, and I loved it because there was no script, no costumes, uh, no rehearsals. And, uh, that just, sounded like a breeze, didn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I got, I started working with Eugene and, and we had, uh, I guess five other people at that time. And then you came in. Yeah, that, that yeah. was a, about four years later, yeah. I guess. So. And, uh. And Eugene uh, was a perfect person for that because he took time and, and helped everybody and developed their talents and gave them uh, a structure that they could work with. And I mean, there, there were people that would come in that had absolutely no theater experience at all and uh, would came up and wanted to be in improv, David did, and they uh, had never done anything. And David started out awkward. Mm -hmm. because he was in a new environment. Well, he but even I, talked about that in the interview we did with I, yeah, him. Yeah, I tell you what, though, <laughs> about a year and a half into it, he was he was one of the good ones. He was good. He yeah. would, he'd come up with a unique thing. I was the old guy, and you remember that. The, they call me the old man. <laughs> and the beautiful thing about it was that uh, everybody had their own life experiences, and I had mine. But mine was from a different era, <laughs> and I would mention things that they had no idea what I was talking about. And this is on stage; we're doing shows, <laughs> and of course, in improv, you have to go with whatever's there. And if you don't know what's going on, you have to just go with flow and work it out. Well, the same thing happened with them; they would mention stuff, and I, I had no <laughs> idea. <I> just, <laughs> And I would just have to play catch up, you know, mm. to it. So it, it really makes it more exciting and, and uh, a lot more fun. Yeah, it does. Improv is great. Um, and you and I still get to do shows on occasion. When... Yeah, how many times have we been married? I don't know, about a million, I think. <laughs> Seems I was like bad. every time we got on stage, we were. Just... <laughs> I was bad about proposing to Fred. I just couldn't resist. <laughs> oh, that's, that's why I'm so nice to his wife. Yeah. <laughs> I know what she's going through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but um, the do we still get to do shows together on occasion oh, yeah. when mm -hmm. we book um, corporate events and things like right, that? Right. Even though we're no longer in face to face because it did uh, close, that company came to an end as well. Um, so I know also that you um, have done a whole lot of other things. So I don't know what what other things would you like to talk about that you've done? Well, I've been I've played. Uh, guitar for 40 something years. So how did that start? Um, my my sister, I was 13 I guess. 
my sister bought me a set of little drums and I started playing the drums and one day my dad came to me and said, uh, Freddie, they call me Freddie, Freddie, uh, is there anything else you'd like to play? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I was the one to play the guitar. Next day I had a guitar and the drums were taken away in kids. <laughs> We have drums. You can come play. Oh yeah, but, yeah, but your daughter can play. I, <laughs> uh, so uh, I started playing, and, and uh, I just loved it. And anything you have to practice. That's the only thing you learn. So I would practice all the time. And by 15, I was working at a music store teaching guitar, and I was teaching at my home. And uh, my very first guitar uh, lesson. Uh, came walking down the sidewalk, and knocked on the door, and I opened it up, and it was this guy who must have been 43, 44, or something like that. And I opened the door and said, yes, sir. I said, well, I'm here for my guitar lesson. So I said, well, come right in. And we sat down, went to the den, sat down. He sat down. And he was waiting for the guitar teacher to come in. <laughs> and I sat down in front of him, and he's kind of looking at me and said, are you teaching this? I said, yes, sir. Uh -huh. He says, oh. It was the last guitar lesson I ever had with that guy. <laughs> he was intimidated a little bit, I don't know. But uh, I taught guitar for a while, and I, I was in a rock band in high school. And what was the name of the band? Tempest. Yeah. Oh. yeah. We, we won a battle of the band one time, so it was, it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And in college, I used to play with groups that would need a guitar player. And, uh, then I started just, I played uh, played at the El Placio for years. Picking guitar while people ate. And is that that's a Mexican restaurant? Yeah, yeah, it's still there. And uh, then uh, when I got into theater and all, I started uh, playing in some of the orchestras for the musicals, and um, that was a lot of fun. And uh, so it's just uh, progressed. And so do you still play? Oh yeah. Now. Yeah. yeah. So um, you do you just play for your own enjoyment now, or do mostly, you... mostly. I did. Uh, <laughs> I had a friend call me and wanted me to do a uh, Christmas show for the, um, the, uh, oh, what was the name of it? One of the uh, Kiwanis Club. And uh, so I did a Christmas show this last Christmas. And uh, I just put together some songs and sang. And uh, from that, a lady came up to me and, get, and asked me if, if I do this for a living. I said, Did you hear me sing? <laughs> And she, so I got a call from an old folks home. They want me to come down and play. Oh, no. So I've got my, my audience set. Now. And they will understand all your jokes. Oh, right? well, I don't know. Well, they may because they're in my ear. So, yeah. so um, who are some of the influences? Like, I think that you have a certain comedy style. Like, who are some of the people that uh, you would study or uh, when you first started doing comedy? or? Well, uh or who did you like to watch? Like, well, Jonathan Winters was was one of my favorites. Um, uh, Dick Van Dyke, who I got to meet, Ooh. as a matter of fact. Very. How nice. did that happen? Well, I was working in Channel uh, Five in Atlanta, and they have a star junket every year where uh, the stars from their shows would come and do promos for all the TV and radio stations. And so, any star would come in. Of course, we got to handle because we were in the public relations department, and. Uh, I was escorting him around, and uh, the one thing he used to do on this television show was he it it, it was a show where uh, the aliens had come to it was a dream, and uh, they w would steal people's heads, and he could bend his head down, and you couldn't see it. And I said, uh, and I was talking, and I said, uh, Mr. Van Dyke, would, would you do that for me? <laughs> and he said, oh, sure. And he turned around and did it. Did it. And he said, I said, how do you do that? And he said, I don't know. They say I have extra vertebrae in my neck or something. But he was just a normal, nice guy. Yeah. And uh, I really admired his... The, very the talented Oh, very talented. Just very so talented. funny. And uh, just about... Just, I'm trying to think. You, you, catch, you catch me off guard. I can't... I know all these people. I can't remember them. Yeah. You know. But anyways, that... Uh, that type of humor um, was really because of the timing on it and all. Uh, it was all about timing back then. Because, I mean, it was like. It is the, now. It, it is really, a lot. 
Timing has changed a little bit, mm-hmm. though, the way that they do certain things. But it is comedic timing, I think, is probably one of the most important things that mm-hmm. you can have. And I think a lot of mine comes on accident. <laughs> <laughs> You're way better at it than I am about that stuff. Well, My what, funnies come on mistakes most of the time when I'm doing something and I'm like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so uh, then I just propose. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yours is different. I think yeah. I think you have a definite... You're very talented at that, like coming up with that next beat, mm. you know. And Well, it's... it's uh, I guess it's, it's part of it, it, and, uh, instinct and also uh, you know, working with it and working mm-hmm. with uh, other people. Uh, I'm, Huntsville just amazes me with the talent that's here. Yeah, uh, there's uh, a lot. I mean, it's not just, hey, it's community talent. No, these people are good. And uh, I've worked with, with uh, some of, some real good comedic actors and actresses. And it's uh, that's why it's been so enjoyable, mm-hmm. because there's so, so much talent that you can bounce off of and, and play with and play off of and all. Did you find we're very fortunate to be in the group we were in because there was a lot of protection that Eugene uh, used to help guide the the way the group went? Absolutely. Uh, that was the most unique group I had ever worked with because everybody literally loved everybody else. Mm-hmm. And they would do nothing to harm, uh, to snipe, uh, to backstab, to any. Everybody looked out for everybody else, mm-hmm. and, uh, and especially on stage. Yeah. I mean, if you get on stage with somebody who uh, is not on your side, uh, especially in improv, mm-hmm. you're in deep trouble. Yeah. It, it's it's interesting because I always felt that that it was like a family for mm-hmm. us. I mean, it Absolutely. was our family. It still is. Stage family, you know. I mean, they're still going on and, yeah. uh, under comic science, and uh, it's pretty much, uh, they've got some new people in there. Mm-hmm. I've been to some of their shows. <sighs> wow. Talented. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Doing great. That's fantastic. Now, also I know about you, and you don't have to talk about this if you don't want to. <laughs> I was nowhere near Cleveland. <laughs> That's my best line. I, I got that from Dennis Brown. I was a friend of mine, uh-huh. and uh, he found out that uh, Sherry Ryan was pregnant, and uh-huh. he says, I'm not, I was nowhere near Cleveland. <laughs> but Dennis is a very, very funny guy, but, he, and, uh, but he's very reclusive. And mm-hmm. you know, he doesn't get out much at all, but very talented, very quick mind, uh, quick thing. It, well, if you're ever in a uh, trivia... Uh, ba- he should uh, be on your team? He's on your team. You've got to have him <laughs> on your team. So listen out, world. <laughs> now, Sherry Ryan, not so. <laughs> Unless every answer was the Pyrenees Mountains. Now, then she may be, be okay. in this chair one day. So well, you, I, you ought to. She, she's, she's, she's got I've some. met her a couple of times yeah. with at one of, I think it... Steve and Terry Lambing's mm-hmm. house. I've yeah, met them. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You need to get her in this chair. That'd be good yeah. to interview. So, hopefully, that will happen. And, you know, you talked about there's so many people in Huntsville. So, I'm oh, hoping yeah. we just have more and more people come because I want people to know. And that's why I'm doing this is because. Well, you've uh, got plenty to work with. I yeah. Tell you that. There's just so many people here that mm-hmm. are good at what they do and, and interesting, too. Now, the, the thing that I was going to ask you about is your book that you wrote. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So you can talk about that or not. So that's okay. up to you. Because a lot of people probably don't know that about you. There was Your a... Your daughter actually was the one who told me oh, one time a... when she cut my hair. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! <laughs> Can't get anything away from me. <laughs> uh, I was working... It was one the space station that we only had two astronauts on board. It was just building. And I was working the TV photo, op, photo ops part of that. And we had nothing to do. I mean, there, I would... Uh, sit for two weeks and never send a command to a to a video tape recorder on board at all. So uh, I started reading. Uh, I would have the midnight shift where nothing was going on, and I would start reading. I st- and I started reading the uh, Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. I'd always heard about it, so I figured I'd have a big thick book and a little, yeah. little type and all. And there was a paragraph in there, just one paragraph about talking about the the person who started the Second World War. And I read it, and it, just one little paragraph on this guy. And he had done a, uh, a fake raid on a radio station in Poland and uh, made it seem, uh, I guess it was, if I can remember, it was in Germany, and it 
um, he, he got uh, some um, dead bodies and put them around like they'd been killed when this radio station was attacked. And uh, they broadcast that they'd uh, done this and all. And what they made it appear is that the, the, the Polish uh, army had gone and, and attacked this radio station when it was actually a German uh, commander doing it. And uh, Germany had a pa pact with Great Britain that, that nobody would fight it unless something happened in Poland. Well, there it happened. That was the, the catalyst for the Great Britain to declare war on Germany. Or whatever. I forgot. Yep, I wrote this thing a long time ago. <laughs> Anyways, mm -hmm. I started looking at this fella and uh, started reading up on him. And he had a fantastic life. Uh, espionage and, and things he did for the, the, the Third Reich and all, and uh, so I gathered them all up and kind of wrote a, my own story on it. It's based on fact, but you know how a lot of stories are, but it's not, it's, a lot of it is, is fiction. Mm -hmm. and I just had a great time doing it. What was the name of it? Do you remember that? Canned Goods. Canned Goods. The canned Goods were the, the people that he brought to this radio station to, to spread them around like they'd been mm -hmm. killed. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's that's why I took the name. But he uh, he he printed uh, he, he got into printing money that, that to destroy the British uh, uh, economy. He was going to uh, drop it all over Great Britain, this fake currency, so th th their dollar value would go down to nothing. Um, he raided a radio station in uh, uh, Warsaw and. Uh, Big uh, broadcast, personal broadcasting propaganda for, uh, against the Germans, and uh, he kidnapped some uh, spies, and uh, it just he had a, a just fantastic life in that genre. Uh, just amazing what he did. So uh, I wrote this book, and I, <laughs> I had a guy that writes German about German uh, World War II stories. I had him read it, and all I got back was. Well, this wouldn't have been Gufferstaffe Nachmeldeten. This would be that. And I, you know, I said, right, look, it's a, it's a fiction book. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> well, that's great. That's yeah. fantastic. That's interesting that you've but done I, that. I've written so. plays and productions and all. Yeah, no, that too. You're you're mm -hmm. very good at writing as well. So, and have been a good editor for me on occasion. <laughs> My movie, The Birthday Party, that yeah. I actually uh, did, and you can find on WeMoPro.com. The um, I presented that script for our improv trip to do as a sketch comedy, actually. And you and um, you and a couple of other, I think it was Trevor and Jason, we were sitting down looking at it, and mm -hmm. you guys kind of helped me develop that a little bit better to be what it what it came to be. So, yeah. so you're really good at editing and writing, and you're so good. And you're a good husband and grandfather and dad. And <laughs> how do you do it all, Fred? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I read books. <laughs> So, uh, are there any other things creatively that we don't know about you that you want to share that you can think of? I mean, that's already so much. I cook. You do? I'm a good cook. You yeah. are? Well, what is your favorite thing to cook? Um, sour broughton, um, or uh, I have this uh, pasta dish that I cook. It's, uh, Tina and I used to sit and watch uh, Rachel Ray's program, 30 Minute Meal. Mm -hmm. We'd watch it and then... Uh, I'd write down all the ingredients and go to the store and get it, come back and make it. Make it. <laughs> Man, that was, so was that's like, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish well, it only took three minutes. Hey. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. So that's good that you cook. I'll have to oh, keep yeah. that in mind. Yeah, huh? yeah. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that you got to come over today well, and so sit with us here. and talk yeah. talk to us. And um, if anybody wants to uh, to get any character drawings, we'll let you hold this up again so you can, oh, okay. you can see what you do. <laughs> That there. If you, uh, if anybody ever wants any drawings, you see how talented and wonderful that is. Looks just like my dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's running around here somewhere. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, well, Fred, I will put it in a plug. I, uh, they're having a Mardi Gras party at uh, the Jackson Center on in, in Research Park, and I'm doing caricatures. And there, when so. is that? It'll be the 28th of February. February 28th. So that will be two Fridays from now. So. Mm -hmm. We uh, this one actually may post actually on that day, so oh, really? okay. um, that would be good. 
Well, everybody so, come rushing down there. Yes, <laughs> come and rush and see Fred if you would like to. Uh, and also, uh, you can ca if you want any comedy done, you can contact Fred as well. And he, he will gather the troops. That's right. And Absolutely. we will do some, some funny making. Jump at it. Any chance. Any chance. <laughs> well, thank you again, and I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. I enjoyed it.